Hello everyone, this is Paman and you are watching the channel called The Virtual Coach. In this video, I am going to summarize the poem called Heaven If You Are Not On The Earth, which is written by Kuempu in Kannada, but it is translated in English by C. Nagana. So, but before we start, I have a small request that please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you will notify for my next video. So, we will begin with the video. So the poem Heaven If You Are Not On The Earth is originally written by Kuempu in Kannada but it is translated in English by C. Nagana. So the entire poem is divided into three stanzas and the first two lines appears to be quite distinct. The poet feels that the heaven cannot be anywhere else except on earth because it is believed that the heaven is supposed to be on the higher field far away from the earth and it is only the blessed person who can reach there. And you know what guys, nobody who has visited the heaven can come back to report the nature of it and it is remains always a mystery. So that is the reason people are advised to do good things or good deeds to reach heaven. The poet feels that the heaven cannot be anywhere else other than on earth. So that is the reason the poet questions heaven itself. He asks that, heaven if you are not here on earth, where else could you be? If we ourselves cannot be gods, then there can be no gods. If we ourselves are not heavenly nymphs, the nymphs are not elsewhere. So in the first para, the poet is trying to say that there is no heaven in reality. And he strongly believes that heaven and earth are not separate entities. The poet refers to our beliefs about God and her nymphs, that means angels. He expresses his convictions that there is no God and it is man himself who is God. He firmly believes that we ourselves are the names, that means angels, and the angels are to be nowhere else but it has to be on the earth only. Heaven and God are merely of man's imagination. So in the next para, he says that, While these roaring streams rushes fast, rolling surf or the waves, the tender sunshine leans on the verdant garden, and then the gentle sun make this earth heaven. So in the next para, the poet tries to introduce us the different form or the parts of heaven that exist on the earth itself. He presents a mesmerizing picture of nature in its pristine form. The poet says that the bliss that we experience, that means the enjoyment that we experience when we look at the streams that are leaping down, roaring from the top of the hills, the waves that come rolling across the seas carrying the surf of their edges, the tender rays of sunlight falling on the vast expanse of green forest and the gentle sun warming up the earth make this earth heaven. So then in the third para, he says that in the splendor of harvest and the moonlight, Heaven lies all over, impiling and the spilling the song of nectar, the poet does create heaven on earth. So in the third stanza, the poet refers to the beauty of the harvest season and the moonlight night. He declares that the one enjoys the heavenly bliss when one watches the splendor of harvest and moonlight night is supposed to be a heaven on the earth itself. So what is the conclusion of this poetry? So here the poet argues that we do not need to seek a heaven after death, but we can enjoy heaven even on earth when we are alive. If uh, only we have the eyes to see heaven on this earth, heaven exists on the earth itself and nowhere else. One is sure to enjoy the pleasure of the heaven when one looks at the splendor of nature. The poet argues that the reader to perceive the tremendous energy that lies underneath the physical beauty of nature. So this is what the idea that we can take from this poem.